everyone. My name is Michelle Pierce. I'm the Training Administrator for Gallagher Security Americas. Uh, today, we've got Life Safety Power with us. We have Michael Bone, who is the Product Manager for Life Safety Power, and John Oliver, who is the, our Global Support. Um, I'm going to let these gentlemen take it away, and hopefully, we have a great presentation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, this is John Oliver. I'm going to start out with a couple of slides and then Mike's going to take over. Um, some of you may be familiar or some not, but uh, over the last year and a half, we have created a series of dual voltage systems uh, from 8, 16, and 24 doors that um, are uh, you know, are much, much more integrated than the single voltage systems that you may have been familiar with in the past. Uh, we've got our standard product in the Gallagher price list, which is uh, dual voltage configurations on a back plate. Uh, we have those in a managed uh, format. And then we also have our ProWire series, which is wiring out to the uh, 6000 controller. And uh, we'll be going through that in, in uh, we won't be going into the pro wire so much, but we're going to really dive into all the modules that make up these systems right here. Uh, I put this together because, as we all know, you know Gallagher works off of C numbers and uh, I'm, I'm a fairly visual person and it's hard for me to remember even two digits. Uh, but if you, you know, You'll get a copy of this presentation, I'm sure. But if you keep this uh, slide here, this is really, in a nutshell, all the C numbers that uh, that we've got in 8, 16, 24 managed um, or pro wire uh, systems. And then what Mike will be covering today are the distribution modules, the features of the power supplies the lock distribution modules, the uh, auxiliary distribution modules, and the network modules that make up uh, our standard models here in 8, 16, and 24, and also the um, pre-wired models. Next, Mike. Which um, have the same power system, power supplies, and modules, but uh, it's it's also got the wiring for the C6000. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. He's going to uh, speed through quite a bit of information, and um, uh, I think uh, I think you'll uh, you should you should take a, a lot away from this. Thank you for your time. Okay, hello everyone. Um, Michael Bone. I am the uh, product manager for Life Safety Power. Um, I've been with the company from the beginning. Have you know, a lot of experience with the product. Um, so this uh, presentation, I'll just preface this. Uh, this is kind of pared down from a four hour uh, technical training. So I had to squeeze it down to a 30 minute presentation. So some of it I'll be going over quick. Some of it I will be kind of skimming a little bit. Um, if you need more information, we can uh, definitely set up a one-on-one -on -one training for um, you know a longer period. Um, so what we're going to go through today is, as John mentioned, the FPL power supply boards, the accessory modules that connect to those power supply boards, and some of the network management. Um, we'll we'll kind of get a light introduction to those. Um, as John mentioned, we won't spend really any time on ProWire right now, though. Okay, so the FPO power supply boards, these are the... The, the main power supplies in a life safety power system. Um, there are three uh, power levels of power supply boards available, a 75 watt, 150 watt, and a 250 watt. Uh, we rate these in wattage because we you get double the current at 12 volts, you do it 24 volts. So typically a 12 volt device will draw twice as much current as a 24 volt device. So it, it you know, gives you a pretty consistent uh, power system to no matter which voltage you're using. Um, here's all the features of the board. I won't go through them all here. Um, we'll, we'll cover most of these throughout the other slides. But uh, one thing to take away from this slide is no matter which of the three power supply boards, they all have the same features. Everything is in 
roughly the same general location no matter which board it is so once you know one you you should know them all <clears throat> so our power supplies have a uh, independent battery charger and why that is important is most uh, power supplies have just a single voltage available and it's typically set at this midpoint at about 26.4 volts the problem with that is your locks want to see about 25 volts so you're overheating your locks but if you set it for 25 now you're not able to charge your battery uh, correctly which needs a 27 and a half volts um, so if it's set in the middle it's not really doing anything very well so we have uh, dual voltage on the board uh, 25 volts for your output 27 and a half to charge your batteries properly and then half of those voltages for uh, 12 volt setting we have a smart battery charger on the board as well um, recharges the batteries faster it does a constant current charge until the battery is fully charged and then it uh, you know regulates the the charging at the end um, we're rated at 40 or 80 amp hours depending on the size of the power supply you're using uh, we can do a larger battery set it just takes longer to charge it it is selectable for sealed lead acid or the newer lithium iron phosphate batteries uh, by a jumper selection on the board. The power supply has no fuses on the outputs. It uses electronic limiting, so there's no fuses to replace. And if the condition goes away, it will restart and you know, continue powering the output. So the power supplies are tested by UL for the required range of uh, zero to 49 degrees Celsius or the ranges here in Fahrenheit. Um, we can operate from minus 30 Fahrenheit to 122 Fahrenheit at 100% and greater than that, we can operate at a derated uh, you know, rating. All of our outputs have dual color LEDs. So what that means is any output that's set for 24 volts, the LED for that output will be blue. If it's 12 volts, it will be green. Uh, and that applies to the power supply boards and all of our accessory boards. We have a uh, array of fault indications uh, for troubleshooting and for fire alarm indication. Uh, we've got the red fire alarm green for ground fault the power supply has ground fault detection uh, for earth ground detection um, ac fault so if ac is low or missing uh, you'll get an ac fault relay uh, led sorry and system fault is basically any of the dc faults on the power supply board or the accessory modules and they all come back to this led and also we have dual uh, relays on the power supply board for indicating those faults so we'll go through the accessory modules. So the B100 is a step down converter. The, in a typical dual voltage system, you would need two power supply boards. What the B100 lets you do is on a uh, lower current, you know, a smaller dual voltage system, it lets you have one main power supply set to 24 volts and that B100 steps it down to 20 to 12 volts. Um, that lets you have a single battery set, um, smaller cabinet, lower cost. Um, right now, all of the eight door systems have a B100 included, um, and the 16 and 24 door systems will be getting B100s uh, shortly after we deplete our current back. Actually, it, it'll be a B150. It'll be a six amp. That'll right. come. Uh, at, it'll probably be Q late Q3, um, but we've got. Uh, plans to uh, pin out the back plates to to accept the additional module. So expect that kind of, uh, yeah, late Q3. Okay. Thank you. Um, so as I mentioned, it lets you create a, a lower cost second voltage. Um, in the case of the Gallagher controllers, you can set it for a precise, you know, 13.6 volts, which is what the controllers ideally want to see. Um, it has a fixed 12 volt range or a adjustable 5 to 18 volt range. 
Uh, so to switch between those is a jumper. Uh, position one is your fixed voltage. Position two is adjustable. So for your Gallagher 13.6, you'll want to set it to position two and then adjust that potentiometer, the blue potentiometer you see right here. Uh, for connections, uh, you bring your DC input to the, the top quick connects there. Um, I will add that this is all pre-wired from us if you buy a system. This only applies if you're adding a B100 to an existing system. Um, but power comes in on the DC in. Uh, it can come into either one of those two connections. They're directly connected together. BR is our DC return, so your DC minus or you know however you want to notate that. Um, there's a DC input LED that will be uh, shows you your input voltage, and that is dual color as well. It'll be green if it's below 14 volts, or blue if it's above 14. Um, the output we have three locations. We have a, a terminal strip right on the B100, um, and also the quick connects that would go out to your other accessory boards. The uh, DC output LED is also dual color. Again, below 14 volts, it's green. Above, it's 14. So this gives a visual of the wiring for it. You got your input wiring coming from your FBO power supply to the B100, your DC plus, DC minus. The flex IO provides fault and fire alarm information between the power supply and the accessory boards. And then the output side will go out to your distribution boards um, afterwards. And both voltages are fed out. The orange carries you 12 volts. The blue carries you 24 volts right through. And the flex IO also continues from the B100 over to the um, distribution modules. So these three boards are the equivalent of what you'd have in the past where you'd have two separate cabinets on the wall, one with your 12 volt supply with distribution, and then a second with your 24 volts with its own distribution. So we'll go through the D8 now. Um, so there's two versions of the D8. The D8 is a fused uh, output board. It just gives you eight simple fused outputs. Each output is selectable for 12 or 24 volts. The D8P is the same, but it provides a two and a half amp class two power limited output using a PTC rather than a fuse. Uh, for all of our distribution boards, it's the same uh, wiring essentially. You got bus one comes into your B1, bus two comes in your B2. So this would be your two different power supplies, your 12 volts or your 24 volts. Um, so it'd be either an FPO and a B100 or two FPOs would, would feed into these. The LEDs, again, are dual color. So by moving the yellow jumper, you can select 12 or 24 volts for each output, and that LED will change color appropriately. We'll go through some of the lock control modules now. Um, so the C4 and C8 are uh, simple lock control modules. Um, they provide eight inputs that control eight relay controlled outputs. Uh, the inputs can select a normally open, normally closed voltage, you know, a variety of different input types. It's very flexible. And then the output can output either 12 volts or 24 volts, or it can be set for a uh, dry contact output. Uh, the M8 is a network managed version of the same board. Um, the C8 has six jumpers per. Uh, output that need to be set, and the M8 is set through uh, the NetLink network interface, which we'll cover in a little bit. Uh, so the C, they all have four or eight inputs, four or eight outputs, dual bus. Um, we have built-in protection diodes on the outputs to prevent uh, the back current flowing back from a lock, and all have bicolor LEDs. Yellow jumper selects your output voltage. This shows all the different uh, input types you can have. Uh, you know, it's like I said, it's very flexible. It can sec it can accept almost any input you can throw at it. Uh, on the output side, we can power 
again, just about anything. We've got uh, fail safe, fail secure options, uh, dry contact, and you can just set it for a constant output if you need to power some kind of equipment with it without having any control features. So we'll go through the LEDs um, on the C8. Um, an LED continuously on means that you have voltage available for that output. The door is locked, the input is inactive, and your PTC or fuse is intact. If the LED is flashing, that means the door is unlocked. Um, that's because it's either activated by the input or by the fire alarm uh, input on the power supply. The LED is off, that means you have no voltage available. So either your fuse is blown, a jumper is out of place, uh, power supply is shut down, um, you know, something like that. So as I mentioned, the C8 has six jumpers per output. This uh, explains what each one is for. Um, I won't go through everything here, but um, there is a chart in the manual and the quick start manual is included with the board. Uh, it's very helpful for setting this. You find the type of output you have. So a door strike with a normally closed contact input without FAI, this is the jumper settings for it. And that is in the quick start and the main manuals. And also on the door of every system with the C8 or C4, we provide a label with this uh, chart here to tell you which what each of the jumpers is for. And we have videos and app notes and uh, Excel configurators for the jumpers available on our website. M8, uh, same visual indicators, uh, all the same uh, indications. So solid means your door is locked, voltage is available. Slow flash means it's unlocked, off means it's no voltage available. Uh, the M8 though adds a fast flashing and that indicates a fault on that output. And there's also a yellow fault LED on the uh, um, M8 board. Uh, as we mentioned, the yellow jumper selects your output voltage. Um, okay. Move on to some of our newer boards here. I don't believe there are any Gallagher models with these yet, but you, you should be seeing some of these soon. Um, the SD4 and SD16 are essentially the same as the D8 that I covered earlier. It's just auxiliary power outputs, um, but the, it provides network managed outputs like an M8 just without the inputs. So these would typically be used to uh, power your Gallagher controllers or any you know, important um, readers or Rex devices. Um, it lets you monitor the voltage and current of each output and power cycle each output. So if you have a controller that went offline, you can just log in remotely, power cycle that output and um, you know, reboot the controller. Uh, like the D8, we've got the three amp fused, the two and a half amp class two with PTCs. The SD16 is the same as the SD4, just provides 16 outputs instead of four. There's only one version of the SD16. It's one amp per output. It's electronically limited and all outputs are class two rated. Um, this kind of gives a visual of how the voltage selection works on all of our um, distribution boards. Um, basically, the this is your yellow jumper here. In position one, it you know pulls from bus one. Position two, it pulls from bus two. Okay, we'll go over some of the basic uh, features of our network management. So network managed systems can provide you information on your battery performance. It can give you your actual standby time by doing a battery test and report that to you. Uh, it can monitor the lock integrity. So if a lock starts failing, it, it can warn you about that before it fully fails. Uh, it lets you power cycle each output to you know, reboot any frozen equipment, or you know, you can override doors, things like that, by doing that. 
there are also some environmental inputs, uh, temperature and humidity for monitoring the, you know, the IDF closet or the server room or the server rack that it's installed in to, you know, give you a indication if your HVAC, HVAC system has started to fail. So the components of a managed system, we have our NetLink, NL4, and NLX boards. Those are the communication gateways for the um, communication to the power supply system. We have our SD boards, which are the auxiliary power, and the M8, which is your lock power. So the NL4 or NLX allows you communication from the outside world into, you, into the system. It generates alerts on fault conditions by email, SNMP, uh, XML, and lets you gives you reports of the system performance either visually through a CSV file or you know through the through the GUI, and allows you remote control of the system. So this is the example of the NetLink screen. Uh, this would be your home page here. Um, you can get into the power supply and battery details. Uh, you can see the actual voltage and current of the main power supply, its battery set. You can see the status of the AC power, the DC power, uh, fire alarm status. Uh, you can, like I said, you can set up a battery test to run automated um, or you know, schedule it or just manually start the battery test so you don't need to send someone out to the site to just stand there while a battery test runs. Uh, your M8 and SD boards gives you down to the powered device. Um, you can label each each output for what the device is connected to it with the location of those devices. Again, give you voltage, current, and status for all of those devices. So the interface for the NetLink boards is browser-based. It's embedded into the board, so there's no extra software to buy for those. Um, you just connect it to the network or directly with the laptop, and you can just log in with an IP address. Uh, you can program your site ID to identify where that system is located. Um, these are the cabinet sensor, cabinet level sensors. So it's your enclosure temperature. We have some external current sensors, voltmeter inputs, event one, which would give you your tamper switch and also gives you your service due indicator. You can view the historical data. The NetLink takes a snapshot at a uh, programmable period of time, up to a thousand events. Typically it's set it for daily or every 12 hours or so. Um, you can view that data on the screen or export it as a CSV file. The bottom of the screen shows you the devices that are connected to that NetLink. Uh, gives you a quick status of each of those boards. So normal trouble service or fire alarm, the little uh, indicators down here. So if you click that image, it brings you to that uh, that that board uh, interface. So again, this is all of the status of the power supply boards and the battery here. Uh, system history shows you how many AC or system faults you've had, how long the battery's been installed, um, information like that. You have your battery status monitoring, so it tells you if your battery is, is fully charged or 50% charged. Um, is where you uh, shows you your, your required standby, what the actual standby is if it's run a battery test and also gives your battery replacement date. This is where you'd run your battery test or schedule the test to happen. Um, you can set a re repeat test interval. So every 180 days, this would run the battery test twice a year. Um, this is the uh, battery settings here. So this is where you'd set your required standby time. So when it runs a battery test, in this case, if it was less than five hours, it would send you a, 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 another alert that it has not uh, met the standby time. So you can get out and replace that battery. OK, this lets you program some of the uh, settings on the power supply board. You can set delays for your AC faults, uh, change the battery charge uh, current to match the battery size. Uh, 
um, reset your counters and set limits for your AC power. Uh, go through the M8 real quick here. I think I'm running out of time. Um, so go through the M8 real quick here. Uh, you got your you know, output descriptions, voltage, current, and power for each output individually, uh, your power status and your input status, uh, fire alarm, whether it's active, inactive, disabled, cycle count. So this will count how many times that door has been unlocked. So if you have a lock that's good for 100,000 cycles, you can set a limit on this for you know, 95,000 cycles, and then you'll get an alert when you're nearing the end of that lock life. And then the status for each output. Down bottom is where you can uh, enable or disable either individual or all outputs. You can either do a hard enable, disable, or you can do a timed reset where it will power that output down for five seconds and bring it back up again. Uh, on the programming screen, this is where you'd set your output descriptions. Set your input type, so that would be one of the jumpers on the C8. You just set that here. Uh, your output type, either mag lock or fail secure strike or just constant on. This, set, this sets your unlocking either on fire alarm or AC loss and upper and lower limits for your voltage and current. Uh, we'll go over that in one second. And then a little uh, aid down here for setting those limits. You can just set a percentage. Uh, high and low here, click the button and it will measure each output and automatically set those upper and lower limits. And also the cycle count limit. So the upper and lower limits on your currents where that is useful is for your locks. So if you know your lock is normally drawing 150 milliamps, you can set that upper and lower limit. So reason for that is um, when a lock starts to fail, one of the two internal coils may short, may partially open, may partially short. And the effect of that is the current is going to change. So your lock may still be working, but it's going to get start, start getting very hot. It's going to draw more current and eventually it's going to burn out. So by getting that alert before it's fully failed, you can get out and replace that lock um, before it fully fails. And if you put that lock model number in the description for that output, you can log in remotely, see that current is you know double what it should be, see what lock you need, grab one off the shelf and go to the job site with what you need. So again, this just shows you any time that current goes out of that range, you'll get an alert. Uh, this is your cycle count. So again, upper and lower limits, if it goes above or below, you'll get an alert and you can reset any or all of the outputs. Uh, SD16, SD4, very similar to the M8. Uh, you got your description, device status, fire alarm status, cycle count, output status. Same control buttons to enable, disable, or reset outputs. Uh, very similar programming screen with some you know less settings, but all the same uh, fields as the M8. So the Netlink is a single power supply. So you, you, you log into that uh, Netlink directly, you can see that the status of that power supply itself. We have a software called MSM Enterprise that lets you put multiple uh, Netlinks into one interface. So now it's a central dashboard. You can see all of the systems connected to that interface. And those systems can either be within that same building, it can be across multiple buildings all over the world. Um, it brings them all into one. Uh, another nice feature of uh, MSM is it lets you do a batch firmware update. So if you have 100 Netlinks out there, you don't have to one by one update the firmware on them. You can upload the newest firmware into MSM, uh, select the systems you want to update, click the start update, and it will update each one of those one at a time automatically. So you don't have to sit there and do that. Uh, also gives you a lot of uh, analytics and charts and graphs and things you can do for uh, some remote troubleshooting of some his of your historical data. Um, MSM is a free dem free download for a demo for up to four Netlink boards, um, and then you can buy additional licenses in blocks of 25. You can stack as many licenses as you need. Um, we've tested up to over 500 
netlinks connected to MSM. Um, the only real limit is the power of your server. As you start adding netlinks, um, once you start getting above 500 or so, it starts really slowing down unless you have a very you know more powerful server. Um, these examples, some of the screens here, um, you've got you know your your home screen that we were just looking at, uh, your critical events, and then a snapshot screen. So this is a you know I, I mentioned the netlink takes a snapshot at certain intervals of time. You can it also takes a snapshot on any trouble condition. So this gives you a snapshot of that point in time in a visual manner. So almost at the end here. Um, so just a couple examples of how you can use the MSM to troubleshoot. So you can go in, do a forensic analysis of your power supply failure. Your snapshot page shows you the power supply, FPO 75 power supply has no voltage here. Uh, M8 output number one is also showing a fault. Um, so you can cl you know, click that output, see that output is zero volts out, no current. Um, so that tells you that that output has failed most likely from an overcurrent. Uh, second example, um, so this one here, you see the power supplies are in fault. You look a little more, uh, M8 output one is also in fault. Do a little looking, you see your current for that output is at 9.8, uh, 0.98 amps, which is above whatever you have programmed for your upper limit. So that indicates you've got a lock beginning to fail uh, because the current has gone significantly higher than what it should be. Um, this shows you what would uh, show up for a uh, battery standby test that has failed. Um, if you needed a four amp standby, this shows you you've only got 2.15 hours, which is lower. So a summary of MSM, it lets you manage, control, and analyze multiple uh, LSP network power systems, uh, either on a single location or multiple locations. Um, you know, because real-time insights for information and data. Uh, lets you be more proactive in your, uh, you know, power supply maintenance and um, troubleshooting, and lets you produce charts, graphs, and gives you critical data. Um, MSM server, there's a server application that runs on a computer somewhere. You point your Netlink devices to it and then uh, access the MSM through a web browser. Um, as I mentioned, there's the blocks of 25 licenses. So if you have 72 sites, you'd need three blocks of 25, um, which would leave you three left over. You can add more licenses at any time. So as your system grows, you just add another block of 25. Um, so there's the download on our website for MSM. Um, we also have a and &E specs, CAD packages, Revit files, step files, a uh, bunch of Excel calculators and worksheets available on our website. Uh, those are all on the knowledge base. Um, there's a couple areas under knowledge base where those are located. Uh, we have a, a pretty good selection of training videos. You can probably spend a couple hours watching training videos. It goes deep dive on each of the modules, uh, some system level, um, videos on MSM, network management, things like that. Those are very uh, helpful videos. <clears throat> we have some troubleshooting guides, step-by-step -step walks you through troubleshooting. We have an online setup and troubleshooting guide and an interactive PDF available for download. Uh, we have our product configurators and selectors to help you, um, you know, select which power supply you need based on your requirements. And that is the end. I know I went really fast, um, but if we have any questions, I can try to answer whatever questions you have. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Does anybody have any questions? Looks like Daniel Leland is typing. Thank you, Daniel. Mike and uh, John, I just want to thank you guys for um, for delivering this this presentation and information. 
um, do appreciate your time on here. Um, I'm going to throw one question out at you, um, which I, I didn't quite see whether you, you captured or not. Um, with your um, management software, the enterprise management software, was that a web application? Was that updated or is that a thick client? It's a client that needs to be installed on a local machine somewhere, or you can put it on like an Amazon AWS server in the cloud, um, and then you access it through a web browser. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Welcome. Like I said, I know I went through fast. I kind of skimmed over a lot of things. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Um, I can either answer the questions or we can set up a, a more in-depth training on either the individual things you have questions on, or we can just go through the whole, um, you know, the whole training in depth. And on our website too, there are application notes. So if you want to understand the dual bus structure you know, in greater detail, I think we've got over 40 application notes um, that uh, between that and the training videos, like Mike said, there's hours of entertainment to be had. <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, um, hey guys. Will has popped in a question asking, uh, how can we access the calculator and do we need an account? Okay, so I just put that up on screen here. Um, so if you go to Knowledge Base and Learning Center, there's a calculators page. And these are Excel calculators here. We have all of the individual calculators, or you can just download the suite here, which includes all of them in one download. Um, and there's you know calculations for how much power the B100 requires from the main power supply, configuration, you know, jumper configuration for C8 battery calculators, uh, wire size, voltage drop calculators, uh, just general Ohm's law. There's a lot a lot of calculation uh, in there. And uh, while well, you're I, on the site there, are you able to um, show that there is actually a managed power supply section for Gallagher on your website as well? Yes. Good products. Gallagher. So these are the pre-wired systems here, but um, you see standard and managed here. So if you want the network managed, you'll, you'll want this one here. There's the C number. Uh, it will bring up the data sheet if you click on that C number. Uh, you get your specifications here. Uh, for the pre-wired systems, there's a wiring guide here. If you click on that, it's a PDF that shows, it doesn't have wiring diagrams for each manual, for each system. There's just, it's just it's a lot of diagrams they have to maintain, um, but it shows you in general how these systems are, are pre-wired for the pro-wire systems. So, you know, it gives you each, each group of wiring. It shows you each board, how we wire to them. Um, so that's a helpful, Helpful download as well. Um, let's verify. We also have the non non wired under the unified power section. Um, again, standard managed. All right. Looks like um, we have run the course. So I appreciate everybody's time for jumping on here, and um, thanks uh, very much to the um, to the life safety power team for um, for coming along and and presenting to everybody. We do appreciate it and we do appreciate the partnership. Um, so again, if anybody has any questions um, that they would like, um, we can definitely get that information to to the chat in here um, and we can we can follow up with uh, with answers and connect anybody up with the life safety team if it if it requires that. We have um, one last little so, question in the chat. Yeah, I saw that, and um, the answer is uh, yes. But um, we'll we'll follow that up with some more information, Demetrius, um, very shortly. Great. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate uh, being invited and uh, everybody's time here on a Tuesday afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.